All right, let's start off computing some examples of flux with something on the easy side. Let's say we have the constant vector field f given by 2i minus 5j plus 3k. And I need to compute the flux of this over the triangle that is defined by the equation 6x plus 3y plus 2z equals 6, but in the positive orthant where x, y, and z are bigger than or equal to 0. That is going to be a plane that cuts out a triangle in this orthant. You can check that that triangle has vertices at 1, 0, 0, 0, 2, 0, and 0, 0, 3. Now let's do this simple example using just plain vector calculus notation. We're going to begin by orienting this triangle with the outward pointing normal pointing out away from the origin. This has a constant unit normal vector. I can read off the coefficients of an orthogonal vector from the equation of that plane. I get 6 and 3 and 2, but then I need to normalize this vector. And 6, 3, 2 is one of those wonderful triples that when you compute the length of that vector, you get an integer, in this case, 7. So the unit normal vector is a constant. It is 1 7 6i plus 3j plus 2 K. Now, what we do is compute everywhere on that surface the dot product of the vector field with the unit normal. f dot n is 2 times 6 minus 5 times 3 plus 3 times 2, all divided by 7. That's 3 sevenths. It's constant. We have a constant infinitesimal flux because everything is so nice. So to compute the net flux, we simply integrate this 3 sevenths with respect to surface area over this surface, but this is really just 3 sevenths times the net area of this triangle. There's no difficult integration to do. All we have to do is remember how to compute the area of a triangle in 3D. You may recall back from volume one that there's a simple way to do this by choosing some vertex, let's say 1, 0, 0, looking at the two vectors emanating from that vertex that define the other points of the triangle, taking the cross product of those two vectors, that is negative 1, 2, 0, cross negative 1, 0, 3, taking the length of that cross product, dividing by 2 to get the area of that triangle. It's half the area of the parallelogram. You can check that that area is equal to 7 halves, and that means that our net flux is 3 sevenths times 7 halves, which is 3 halves. That was simple. That was easy. If you have a simple enough vector field, then you really don't need to be integrating two form fields. You can just do things based on vectors and maybe a little bit of integration if you can compute the surface area element nicely. But what if things are harder? What if things are more difficult? Let's make a slightly more complicated vector field, f, given by xi minus 2xyj plus 4zk. Let's integrate this over a simple triangle again, something that's even simpler, something that is defined by x plus y plus z equals 2. This has vertices at 2, 0, 0, 0, 2, 0, 0, 0, 2. Now, with this nonlinear vector field, I think, I think we should practice computing the integral of the flux 2 form. That flux 2 form, phi sub f, is x dy wedge dz minus 2xy dz wedge dx plus 4z dx wedge dy. Now, the next thing that we're going to have to do is parameterize this surface. It's not so bad, but it's going to take some notational effort. Let's say our parameterization is g. It depends on two parameters, s and t, and we simply use the graph of this plane. So x is s, y is t, z is 2 minus s minus t. In this case, we need to specify the bounds on s and t. This is going to be a simple triangle in the s, t plane. Okay, next we take the derivative of this parameterization. dg is simple, it's constant. It has columns 1, 0, negative 1, and 0, 1, negative 1. This is constant because we have this really simple flat surface with a constant unit normal parallel to 1, 1, 1. Okay, let's assemble everything together and do the integral of this flux 2 form, phi sub f over t. 
what we need to do is take that flux two form x dy wedge dz minus 2xy dz wedge dx plus 4z dx wedge dy. We need to feed it the derivative of g. That is the matrix with columns 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 1, negative 1. We need to evaluate this at x equals s, y equals t, z equals 2 minus s minus t, and then integrate this whole thing over that region in the st plane. Now that looks bad, but it's really just the setup that takes a lot of care. The rest is going to be a standard double integral. So let's start substituting in these three terms. The first, x dy wedge dz, evaluates to s times what happens when we feed this matrix into dy wedge dz. That determinant of that 2 by 2 subblock at the bottom is just 1. So our first term simplifies to just s. The second term in this integral, minus 2xy dz wedge dx, simplifies to minus 2st times, again, 1. The last term becomes 4 times z, which is 2 minus s minus t. Again, dx wedge dy, you feed this matrix to it, you get a value of 1. The reason why we get 1, 1, 1 is related to the vector that is orthogonal to this triangle. Okay, now the rest is going to be just a fairly unpleasant double integral. If I integrate first with respect to t, then what I get with some algebraic manipulation is t times quantity 8 minus 3s minus 2t squared times quantity 1 plus 2s. I have to evaluate that as t goes from 0 to 2 minus s. With some expansion and simplification and reduction, I get, as an integrand, 8 minus 22s plus 17s squared minus 4s cubed. Integrating that with respect to ds as s goes from 0 to 2 gives me a final answer of 8s minus 11s squared plus 17 thirds s cubed minus s to the fourth. Evaluating that from 0 to 2 gives me 4 thirds. Now that was not an easy computation, but it is a doable computation. And if you have complicated vector fields, complicated surfaces, you're going to want to integrate those two form fields. Now this set of problems that we've been doing, computing flux, is going to serve as the motivation for our next big result. This is going to be an analog of the flux form of Green's theorem, but in 3D.